Chapter 15 of The Light Princess Read by Christy Williams Look at the rain. The princess burst into a passion of tears and fell on the floor. There she lay for an hour, and her tears never ceased. All the pent-up crying of her life was spent now, and a rain came on, such as had never been seen in that country. The sun shone all the time, and the great drops which fell straight to the earth, shone likewise. The palace was in the heart of a rainbow. It was a rain of rubies and sapphires and emeralds and topazes. The torrents poured from the mountains like molten gold, and if it had not been for its subterraneous outlet, the lake would have overflowed and inundated the country. It was full from shore to shore. But the princess did not heed the lake, she lay on the floor and wept. And this rain within doors was far more wonderful than the rain out of doors. For when it abated a little, and she proceeded to rise, she found, to her astonishment, that she could not. At length, after many efforts, she succeeded in getting upon her feet. But she tumbled down again directly. Hearing her fall, her old nurse uttered a yell of delight and ran to her screaming my darling child she's found her gravity oh that's it is it said the princess rubbing her shoulder and her knee alternately i consider it very unpleasant i feel as if i should be crushed to pieces hurrah cried the prince from the bed if you've come round princess so have i how's the lake brimful answered the nurse then we're all happy that we are indeed, answered the princess, sobbing. And there was rejoicing all over the country that rainy day. Even the babies forgot their past troubles and danced and crowed amazingly. And the king told stories and the queen listened to them. And he divided the money in his box and she, the honey in her pot, to all the children. And there was such jubilation as was never heard of before. Of course, the prince and princess were betrothed at once, but the princess had to learn to walk before they could be married with any propriety. And this was not so easy at her time of life, for she could walk no more than a baby. She was always falling down and hurting herself. Is this the gravity you used to make so much of? said she one day to the prince as he raised her from the floor. For my part, I was a great deal more comfortable without it. No, no, that's not it. This is it, replied the prince, as he took her up and carried her about like a baby, kissing her all the time. This is gravity. That's better, said she. I don't mind that so much. And she smiled the sweetest, loveliest smile in the prince's face and she gave him one little kiss in return for all his, and he thought them overpaid, for he was beside himself with delight. I fear she complained of her gravity more than once after this, notwithstanding. It was a long time before she got reconciled to walking, but the pain of learning it was quite counterbalanced by two things, either of which would have been sufficient consolation. The first was that the prince himself was her teacher, and the second, that she could tumble into the lake as often as she pleased. Still, she preferred to have the prince jump in with her, and the splash they made before was nothing to the splash they made now. The lake never sank again. In process of time, it wore the roof of the cavern quite through, and was twice as deep as before. The only revenge the princess took upon her aunt was to tread pretty hard on her gouty toe the next time she saw her. But she was sorry for it the very next day, when she heard that the water had undermined her house, and that it had fallen in the night, burying her in its ruins, whence no one ever ventured to dig up her body. There she lies to this day. So the prince and princess lived and were happy and had crowns of gold, and clothes of cloth, and shoes of leather, 
and children of boys and girls, not one of whom was ever known, on the most critical occasion, to lose the smallest atom of his or her due proportion of gravity.